Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course, and as you can see from the title of this video, I want to take a look back at season two when Martel called Marceau a bit, the B word, okay? And definitely there was a lot of tension at this time between the Scots and the then Holtz, you know, when they were still married, Melody and Martell. There was a lot of tension, and the majority of it was due to the men between Martell and Marceau. And yet, after all that tension, they managed to sweep it under the rug, and Marceau really took offense years later when Stormy called him the B word. And now it seems like the Scots really don't F with Stormy like that. So we're going to take this stroll down memory lane. But first, you know what I'm going to ask. If you could please hit the like button on this video, then YouTube will recommend this video to more people who love discussing love and marriage Huntsville. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. All right. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these sound bites are allowed. So we're going to be talking about some conversations amongst the men, and then we're going to see Melody's reaction to when Martel told her everything that he has said to Marceau. So this stroll down memory lane is actually the side street is season two of Love and Marriage Huntsville, episode four, um, sex tapes. I think it's called Threats tapes and videotapes, something like that. It's when, you know, um, Miss Van comes into town to hold the young sugar mama. And she talked about how Marceau tried to insinuate that there was a SEX tape involving her in Basement Billy. And um, also this is the episode after episode three, which was the gift of extortion. When Letitia showed up to Melody's Embrace launch event, uninvited and Melody asks the security guard at the venue to escort Letitia out. So this scene, obviously they're like at kind of like a gym or a recreation center. They were playing sports and we have Marceau, Maurice and Sidaric and they're going to be discussing Martel. So I'm going to go ahead and play this soundbite and come back with my commentary. <laughs> Is that, is that okay with you? At the end of the day, 
You do what y'all do. If it happens, it happens. But I'm not saying, hey, man, can you go call him up and, 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 and do it? I'm always open mind. Hey. I'm sorry we had to put you out there. Okay, so Sadarik so asked Marceau and Maurice if they've talked to Martel. Mar Maurice says no, it's like really bad. And Marceau leads with Melody had a makeup event. Letitia decided to pop up and um, Melody had her escorted out. So he leads with that you know, because he's kind of uncomfortable, in my opinion, to bring up the tension between he and Martel. And then he says, you know, I had to file a police report because he threatened me. And uh, when he saw me at the gym, he was like, why are you such a B word? You know, because Martel accused Marcel of retweeting his uh, tax returns to a blogger. And then, you know, he was very upset about that. Marcel denies doing that. But um, there was a lot of heavy tension. And Sadarik wanted to get the men together so that they can try and reconcile. Now, I feel like Sadarik already knew the answer to his question when he asked the men, you know, have you spoken with Martel? It's just, I can tell like Marceau, he's not really confrontational, in my opinion. I feel like this pattern of people calling him the B word, I know, because I know like a lot of traditionalists out there, a lot of traditional women, Back during season six, when I would do like recap videos and talk about Stormy calling him that, there would be a couple of women in the comments was like, no, she was absolutely wrong. She called a man a B word as if that word is only reserved for women. I do not think that the B word is just reserved for women. I think that absolutely there is some B-I-T-C-H ass men out here. Absolutely. Now, um, if Marceau felt threatened, you know, he wanted to involve law enforcement. Okay, that's what they're there for. But I, when I think of bitch assness, I think about, you know, women beaters and, you know, people who want to abuse their power to kind of like bother somebody. To me, the, and, and bullying, that's bitch assness for me. But I'm seeing a pattern. And when Stormy called Marceau the B word, there was not hardly as not hardly as much tension between Marceau and Tisha and Stormy and Courtney as there was between Marceau and Martel. And we're going to see more because Sadarik is going to bring Marceau and Martel together. And definitely Maurice was not there. I guess Sadarik wanted it as even playing field as possible. But let's go ahead and head there because Martel is going to say something interesting about the Scott family dynamic that um, I've never paid attention to previously years ago watching season two. So we're going to hear Martel bring up something about the Scott family, and I want to talk about that. And let me get that sound bite together. This is Martel defending himself. And here we go. Well, Tisha, you know, they stabbed us in our back several times. It's safe to say that Miss Wanda talked the way she does because Marcel and Tisha, they feed her with this false narrative because she's always on the attack. I definitely stand by. Don't start anything, and it won't be anything. Now, in terms of the, the accusation of threat, I did talk about that. This is my position. Accusation of a threat. Uh, accusation right. of the accusation. If you would have thought it was a threat in your life, you would have made sure that our police would have came in and talked to me or something. At the end of the day, you can't talk to grown people like this. Dude, I did not say one time that I'm going to do something. So okay. What, what, okay. what are you saying? The words you said to me was, y'all must not like living down here. What do you mean? You must not like living in Huntsville. You must not know who I am. You must not know who my family is. What? Those are your words. I think he's very capable of acting on those words. I didn't think personally that it was a threat on his life. It's irresponsible of me to not take appropriate action. If we remove those two infractions, is there a path forward? At this point, I mean, I'm, I'm maxed out. Okay. Follow, follow what I'm saying? Like, I'm maxed out just on the, on the bullshit. You're saying there's more stuff other than that as well. 
that's what I said. Okay. I, okay. That's why I said that was like it, the, that's the that's what like tipped it over the iceberg. You know, okay. Okay. There was just just so much going on. Tell me what else was going on. You know, if you share certain things on social media, people can screenshot, send it to this person, and they go send it to this person. And I'm like, no, why are you? I, I, I verbatim. I said, man, you're a bitch for sending the blogger my text information. There's not a soul alive that can ever say, hey, man, Marshall screenshotted my business to someone else. Because Marshall has never did that. Because that right there requires a vagina. I don't post my stuff on IG. Tisha posts it on IG. I don't use it to handle business or reflect to see what I'm, what I'm doing. Nah, man. It's not my thing. When Martell got on this nonsense, I blocked him. Because I don't have a place in my life for that. You, you blocked. You blocked. Okay. But where did they come from, though? Because I don't want harassing phone calls. Yeah, I mean, I'll stop doing the yeah, so I said, it ain't like I, it ain't like I just wake up in the morning and be like, and phone call. it's not like I'm texting y'all out like the blue. It's about the same thing your wife was saying the other night at um, Mel's Embrace Beauty thing. Yeah. I told her that I think she should go because this is, our relationship is not where it has and probably never will be. So I think she should go. I think it's still overreaction, out of stress, out, out of place, I think intentional to, uh, to have a hair sorted out. Yeah. But you know that it was a private event. At the end of the day, Martel, you owe me an apology for the way you spoke to me in the gym. Boy, I'm sorry, but um, you don't have to. I don't want to apologize to anything. You don't have to. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the other gym. All right, so, that's what I'm going to Can I say thank you? Yeah, don't, don't, don't thank me, brother. For not speaking. Oh, no, no. Yeah, you should thank me. You should, you should thank me. I'm thank for the you. word that I use instead of the action. Another three. Yeah. Hey, call him on that. No, I'm good. You don't come through on your threats. See, they definitely were not friends. And this totally makes sense to Melody's TikTok Live the other day when she said, these people on the show are not friends. And it's like deep rooted and it goes back some years at this point. You know, we are on, depending on who you ask, season seven, season eight. But this soundbite is from season two. And the tension was thick between Martel and Marceau. They were like the majority of the high tension. And then just overall, the two couples, the Holtz and the Scots, there, there was a lot of tension there. So when Martel first arrives at the gym, Marceau did try to give him dab. And Martel was like, nope. And then um, Marceau just kind of used that one arm to kind of act like he was stretching after he was left hanging. And Martel was talking to Sadarik saying, you know, um, his mother-in-law says crazy things. My mother would never talk about the Scots the, the way that Wanda does unless we've been talking a lot of junk to my mom about them. Then she would feel comfortable to say rude things to them. So I'm convinced, you know, this is Martel talking, like if Wanda can say crazy things to my wife and disrespect my wife, she would only feel comfortable doing that in front of Marceau and Tisha if Marceau and Tisha talk smack about us to her. And Marceau just sat there. He did not confirm or deny that he's talked smack about the Holtz in front of Wanda. But I thought that was a very interesting observation for Martel. For him to totally, you know, drag Wanda for disrespecting Melody. And he says, and I know that she gets information from them. He particularly said, Wanda gets false narratives from Marceau and Tisha. And, and he says she is always on the attack. Isn't it funny how some things change and some things stay the same? Because Wanda just went live last night, Thursday, and she was talking about, you know, and I can't wait to go live next week because I'm going to say something because somebody called me and told me not to say it tonight, but to wait until the episode aired. And it's so funny because, you know, I'm convinced that Carlos pre-produces all of the cast members and former cast members who have live streams like Destiny, Wanda, and I think he totally gives them tips on um, 
their uh, content, what to say, what not to say, and when to say it. But according to Martel, at least back in the day during season two, he said that Tisha and Marceau, they have to be the ones feeding Wanda false narratives because she is always on the attack. And Marceau was saying that, you know, uh, Martel could not just call him a B, talking to him that way at the gym. He owed him an apology. Martel said he was not apologizing. And then Marceau said, that's another threat. Martel told him you could call the cops about that one. He says, no, you don't come through on your threats. And in scene. So Martel, he must be pretty good at some voodoo because for this tension to be so thick and for Marceau to have been so disrespected by Martel, as soon as that marriage was over, as soon as Melody left Martel, the Scots totally turned and all of a sudden they were cool with Martel and down with the gang up against Melody. And even seasons later, for Stormy to have called Marceau the B word, you know, he totally doesn't want to fool with Stormy anymore, but it has not been the case with Martel. So that is just so interesting. But it could go back to the theory that a lot of people have stated over the years that Martel must have more dirt on Marceau and more Reese than a broom for them to be down with him and be okay with the gang up on Melody. But there is more. So then later on in the episode, towards the end, we see uh, Martell and Melody, they meet up at the office that they once shared and they have a confessional, obviously. And Martell is going to bring Melody up to speed on him calling Marceau the B word and, you know, the fallout of that. The picture that you see all the way to the right was Melody's reaction once he said, yeah, I called him, called him a B, you know, and then Martell and Melody they have a discussion about the different ways in which they can interact with someone that they're really not checking for. And, you know, Melody exercises her self-control and she said, you know, I can go back and forth all day via words with somebody. And, you know, Martel's like, well, I'm not built like that. She's like, I know. So let's go ahead and listen to this soundbite because I think that it's a very interesting conversation about, you know, having to interact with people that you may not really, you know, care for. I have an opportunity to talk to you about last night. So Dark invited me to the gym. And I see why he invited me because Marcel was there too. Oh, oh. Oh, God, I know this one left. I already know. You already know, because we're not trying to be cool with them at all. So I walk up in there. You know, I ain't shake no hand. I ain't say what's up. I'm not faking nothing. Yeah. You know, we ain't cool. Don't be trying to dap me up. Hell, we just got into it in the gym. Hell, damn, we can have a go. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got into it in the gym? Yeah, baby. You didn't tell me about that. What happened? I didn't. I called him a bitch. <laughs> Why did you have to go and call Marceau a bitch in public and now I'm just not hearing about it? That was for him, directed at him, and I, he, I'm the only person that heard it. If anyone else knows about it, it's because he went and told to my body. Bitch. Like he had the audacity to say, I should apologize. I'm like, I'm not trying to be cool with you. I want to slap you in your face, so why would I apologize to you for anything? So just be happy that I won't do that. All right, Marcel. See, that's what I'm talking about. We got to get that. Yeah, it's yeah. tough, though, when you're dealing with ignorant folks. Right. <laughs> they can push them buttons. No, I'm never asking to apologize to you. Boy. And see, because me, I'll sit here and go back and forth with a person all day. No, no words. That's a you woman, though. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's a woman. woman. I, don't got, I don't have those tendencies. You I know. know what I'm saying? Well, we don't want y'all and you and Marcel out here fighting. That's no. No. Uh-uh. Because I'm not trying to get no, another Polish report. To me, when you know you've been good to somebody, you know you've helped them, and whenever they try to bring you down and bring down everything that you've worked for and you built, right. only to make themselves look better yeah. or feel better, maybe does it help your ass sleep better at night? Like, filing a police report? They won't ever know real true friends in my book. Trying to come for our brand. Right, right, and that's messed up. Honestly, I don't feel like Tisha and Marcel were ever 
genuine, sincere friends at this point. And I feel like they just latched on because they were in a time in their life when they were in need. It's easy for people to be your friends while their hands are out. You know? Yeah, right. We're not those type of people that do something and then try to throw it up in your face. But like you say, show some type of gratitude. Let us know that you appreciate the things that we've done. Yeah, that's Don't what try you to stab say. us in the back. Yeah, that's what you say. I see put some respect on it. So Dark was talking about how would we be if we were, you know, in a room by ourselves or something like that. I mean, I could be, I'm not even going to say cordial. It's enough for us to talk about. I don't want to shake your hand. I'm not going to even speak to you or anything like that. I feel like I could be in the same room with them, you know? Hey. Yeah, I could be in the same room with them, but you know me. I go in, say what I got to say, and chop it up like I need to chop it up in deuces. I rip them good part real good with the words. Okay. You know, you ever been told off by somebody so good? That you wish they had to just piss slapped you and stay. Of course. Yeah, guess who? Oh. You. <laughs> Shut up, Martel. <laughs> that was so funny. I was like cracking up um, when I was watching this episode. So, um, you know, Melody was talking about, you know, I can go back and forth with words with someone. I don't have to get physical. And Martel said that he is not built that way. So she's like, yeah, you got to get that anger out because we do not need you and Marceau out here fighting. So it was always about Melody and Martel upholding their positive and professional image in the Huntsville area, protecting their brand, which really shows um, when a person takes their business seriously. And I try to carry out that same business model myself. Like I remind myself, I tell myself, YouTube says that I am their business partner. When I log into the YouTube studio app, it says at the top that I am a business partner uh, with YouTube. So I try to make sure that I say the disclosures, everything that I'm saying is alleged and just my opinion. And I remind everyone of fair use commentary. You know, I repurpose it. I do a still visuals and um, chop up the sound bites and don't definitely don't just straight up stream someone's live, you know, but repurpose it. And um, I take all that seriously. So I totally respect, you know, Melody saying, we don't want y'all out here fighting. We all know at the re re relaunch of Madani when Melody was streaming live on Instagram and then she saw where it was getting really hectic and she, she uh, went running and she said, Martel, do not fight. Your children are watching you. And I believe that she was able to calm him down in that moment, but you have to constantly be thinking about your business and your brand, you know, take yourself seriously. I remember like being a freshman at Michigan State and um, this one professor, Leonora Smith, she, I would go visit her during office hours and I would say, oh, look what I wrote. She would have me like read some of my stories in front of the kids. Sometimes we will walk back to like our dorms. They would say, you have to tell us what happened to the such and such character. but. Professor Smith would tell me, take yourself serious, Ebony, as a writer. You know, don't just think that it's like fantasy in your dorm room, you know? So I I love the business conversations on Love and Marriage Huntsville. That's one of the things that I love, love, love about it and feel feels like that's what makes it such a special reality TV show. Now, I also want to talk about, you know, Melody and Martell having the revelations about the Scots. You know, like, I don't think they were ever our friend. And Martell said, you know, people like you when their hand is out. And we know about how the Holtz have helped them, you know, with transportation, a vehicle and um, residency, you know, living in a rental property of the Holtz. So, and Martel said, you know, we're not the types to constantly remind you of how we helped you, but goodness, respect us. And I think some people, you know, if they're operating from a place of pride, they're not going to want to admit to those things, right? Especially on camera. Even on Married to Medicine, involving Dr. Damon, not so much Dr. Heavenly. I've only heard the name Dr. Damon, but... When Dr. Damon met Toya's husband, Dr. Eugene, years ago, 
and Dr. Eugene was ready to marry Toya, like Dr. Damon gave him a significant amount of money for their wedding and or purchase of a house. It was like a very important transaction. Dr. Damon gifted him some money. And it was during a time, it was very heated between Toya and Dr. Heavenly. And it, it came up, it popped out that Dr. Damon had blessed them this way years and years and years ago. And Eugene and Toya, obviously their producer asked them about it during the confessional. And they both had like these lousy facial expressions, rolling their eyes, including Dr. Eugene. And he was like, oh well, yeah, years, years ago, you know, when Toya and I were getting married, like, yeah, Dr. Damon gave me some money. Like he didn't want to say it, you know? And I think that's really weird energy. Like, don't worry about what people think of you. Don't worry about your financial state at the time. Say, yes, we were a young couple. I was a young doctor, student loan debts, and we were in love. And Dr. Damon, I worked with him and at the hospital and he gave me some money. I mean, I mean, that's life. You know, people go through the financial uh, valleys and then you rise up from it. It's not a big deal. It's super common. Nothing to be ashamed of. But, you know, their expressions were just so ugh, like such a turnoff. So I thought of that as I was watching this scene and thinking about, you know, uh, Marceau and Tisha. So I think that they try to flip it to deflect you know, how they've been helped. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. But then it's just been a strange set of events over the years with the gang up on Melody after Martel, you know, called Marceau a B word. And according to Marceau, threatened him to the point where he went to the police and filed a report. And then you know how he's he had done his wife at the time. She leaves him with not one, not two, not three, but four kids. And y'all are okay with the gang up on her. Just crazy. And now here we are to season seven slash eight. And in the second half of the season, we're going to see Martel and Marceau get into it. And Marceau is going to say, I have no respect for you. Just like Melody said. They are not really friends. But I thank y'all so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate the support. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. I love the looking back at the past seasons because sometimes when you look back on the past, it does help to explain some things that's happening in the present, you know? So I hope that your weekend is off to a good start. My plan is because the cider mill should be open, you know, here in the Midwest and Michigan. So I think I'm going to hit up a cider mill tomorrow. And then Sunday, if it's not storming and it's, you know, hot, I'm going to go to the beach. So that is going to be my weekend. Then the plan is to chill, stay local, stay in the crib on Monday. So what are your weekend plans? I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.